I'm Tim Daly, Executive Director of the Cuyahoga County Soldiers and Sailors Monument. I'm also a past master of Cleveland Lodge number 781 Free and Accepted Masons in Ohio, and I am also the Executive Director of the Cleveland Masonic Library and Museum located in Cleveland, Ohio. Today I will be sharing a story about Masons at the bombing of Fort Sumner. Upon reflection, we find that the years 1861 to 1865 were the darkest days in our nation's history. During this period, the monumental struggle for the very existence of our nation transpired. Though known by many names, such as the Brothers' War, the Late's Unpleasantness, the War Between the States, the War of Northern Aggression, the War of the Rebellion, and the War of Southern Independence, the American Civil War would prove to be a struggle so severe that it will rip father from son, divide state from state, and pit brother against brother, friend against friend, and Mason against Mason. Ironically, the opposing commanders who faced each other at Charleston on April 12, 1861, were both brothers of the order. Prior to this date, brother and general P.G.T. Beauregard is reported to have stated early in 1861 that, quote, if the blank politicians will get out of the way and leave the issues to us Masons, we will settle the difficulty, end quote. However, as the record of history reveals, this did not occur, and at 4.30 a.m. on April 12, 1861, as the first gray light of dawn began to appear on the horizon, the order was given to commence the bombardment of Fort Sumner. During the bombardment of Sumner, the wooden barracks caught fire. Dense clouds of black smoke indicated a serious conflagration. As he watched, Beauregard knew that if the flames reached the powder magazines, the resulting explosion would strewn the surrounding sea with wreckage of fort and fragments of bodies. Beauregard's official report stated that at about 7.30 o'clock, it was discovered that our shells had set fire to the barracks within the fort. Apprehending some terrible calamity to the garrison, I immediately dispatched an offer of assistance to Major Anderson. Beauregard's aides returned and informed him that we found the barracks totally destroyed. We stated to Major Anderson that we had been sent with a fire engine to offer assistance to extinguish the fire. The Major replied that his fire was almost burned out. We again asked if he did not think it best to use the engine which accompanied us on the steamer. He replied no, that he thought everything had been consumed that would burn. He asked us to thank General Beauregard for his kindness, and on leaving, the Major accompanied us himself as far as our small boat. On the 13th, the Union resistance collapsed. Beauregard chose not to hold the garrison as captives. On the contrary, he extended to them every courtesy. Major Anderson was given the privilege not only of saluting his flag, but of marching his command out with banners flying and with drums beating Yankee Doodle. Nor was that all. The Confederate general provided a steamer, the Isabel, to transport Anderson and his men to the Union fleet anchored outside the harbor, the very fleet that had been sent to reinforce the fort. However, it developed that the occasion of their departure was not to be uneventful. From the shore battery streamed artillerymen, who but a few hours before had manned the guns which had made the wreckage of Sumner, and Beauregard observed that as the steamer Isabel left the harbor, the soldiers of the batteries on Cummings Point lined the beach, silent and with heads uncovered, while Anderson and his men passed before them.